You know what one of my boys texted me after the Ravens lost to the Chiefs the other day in the AFC Championship and he was watching the video? He said, man, I, I'm really sorry for your loss, but that's a fire jacket you got on. So shout out to Towson Town Center because everybody be asking me where I got this jacket from. I ain't gatekeeping. It's from Towson Town Center. It's from one of the stores upstairs. I do not remember which store it was. If I did, I would tell you gladly. But anyway, um, speaking of loss, the Baltimore Ravens, of course, like we've been talking about ever since it happened. It's Wednesday. We still have not gotten over it. The Baltimore Ravens, they lost to the Chiefs, and that was devastating. It was heartbreaking. It was frustrating. And it was all these emotions that came with the loss of that game. But the Baltimore Ravens, while they lost that game, they could end up losing even more because every day that passes, it seems like they're getting closer and closer to losing Mike McDonald. And Mike McDonald is currently their defensive coordinator, and he has just – Done a phenomenal job. He's done a great job. And I know y'all have heard us say that a lot. Y'all have said it a lot yourselves. So it's known that Mike McDonald is an amazing defensive coordinator. But maybe, just maybe, especially since now the Seahawks, they've been interested in him and they've been waiting for him. They could have hired some other people. They could have went in some other directions. But they've been waiting for Mike McDonald to get a chance to interview him. And now they're having not the first, but their second interview with him today. And it's been an interesting turn of events for the Seattle Seahawks with their head coaching search. Before we get into it, take keep it clean. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you do not miss not a single Ravens offseason update, even though we don't want to be in the offseason yet, but we're here. Uh, and also leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton. Y'all been doing that a lot already. But keep it up and, and know that I appreciate y'all big time. And also, special shout out to the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Question from subscribers coming soon. And also, shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean channel members. I appreciate all y'all extra support. Now, um, with Mike McDonald, like I said, uh, they are interviewing him. The Seattle Seahawks are going to be interviewing him for a second time today. Let, let's just read the report from Tom Pelissero. He said, the Seahawks are bringing in Ravens defensive coordinator Mike McDonald today for a second interview for their head coaching job Per sources, Seattle met with McDonald, 30, who's 36 years old, on Tuesday in Baltimore. Now he's going through the expanded process they did with other candidates. So I think he threw that part in just to make us Ravens fans feel a little better. Like, oh, they, they, they did this with other candidates. They went through the second interview with them, too. It don't help us feel any better. It don't help me feel any better about the possibility of losing Mike McDonald. Because I don't want to lose him. Now, with the Seattle Seahawks, Ben Johnson, um, the Detroit Lions offensive coordinator, they had had him in for a first interview, and then they were going to have him in for a second. Said that they were on the way to Detroit, uh, and they were getting ready to meet with him. And it's like, okay, Ben Johnson's getting ready to have a second interview. And then he told them, nope, no thanks. I'm staying here in Detroit. While they were on the way to go meet with him. So you think that that don't add some fuel to their fire on really wanting to get a hire done and taken care of? That's why I think it's a wrap, man. I really do. It's not official yet, but it ain't really looking so good uh, when it comes to Mike McDonald and the Baltimore Ravens that he ends up staying. And, of course, we'll be happy for Mike McDonald uh, as a person like because you want to see people grow. You want to see people take that next step. But, again, selfishly, as a Baltimore Ravens fan, uh, you don't want to fix something that's not broken. Now, one of the big reasons, and I can only speak for myself, why I do not want Mike McDonald to go uh, for a couple of different reasons. Now, we know he's not the only defensive coordinator in the world. He is not the only person that can make adjustments in the world. He's not. But the fact that he does both of those things so well, he is a great defensive coordinator, and he makes phenomenal adjustments. And, like, he really – and he makes adjustments in the clutch moments, too. With everything's on the line, nine times out of ten, Mike McDonald's going to get it right. He showed that to us this season. There were some games where it was like, hey, what's going on? But there were not many. But another big reason that I do not want Mike McDonald to go anywhere is for a couple more things. One, development. You think about the development of different players. You look at guys like a Kyle Hamilton. Look at just how much he's continued to improve from his rookie season. Kyle Hamilton and Mike McDonald, they were rookies together because – Two years ago, that was Kyle Hamilton's first year. And two years ago was Mike McDonald's first year as defensive coordinator. They grew together. But the thing about Mike McDonald, uh, something that we love seeing is not just with Kyle Hamilton, but with a lot of other guys. With Brandon Stevens, look at the emergence of him. Because we remember a couple years ago, it was looking like Brandon Stevens, oh, okay, the Ravens really like this guy for some reason, but he's a little shaky. But Mike McDonald made him a, a really, really good cornerback. This year, he took such a big jump. 
Geno Stone. Geno Stone. Now, I know with Geno Stone, when he was first drafted, a lot of Ravens fans were like, oh, man, th this dude is like, he not Ed Reed, but, hey, he, he could cause some turnovers. This dude is super, super smart. He's in the right position. He ain't the fastest, but he knows how to be around that ball. And when Geno Stone was first with the Ravens, even though they, en they ended up cutting him. So it obviously hadn't worked out then. And, of course, he did have Earl Thomas in front of him and whatnot. So it was a different situation. But still, Geno Stone came back under Mike McDonald. And look how good Geno Stone did in limited action, too. Because he, obviously, he only ended up starting when Marcus Williams went out. But he did a phenomenal job. So what Mike McDonald has done, and we've seen it with other players, too, he puts them in positions to have success. And he understands his personnel like no other. Going back, we're not here to bash, um, to bash Wink at all. Wink was cool. Wink, Wink had the vibes and whatnot. But one thing that Wink didn't have was the recognition for his personnel. He did not realize what players were and were not out there. And we saw that time and time again. He did not put his players in positions to have success. Mike McDonald is the exact opposite. And that's why we love him so much and really want him to stick around big time. And with Mike McDonald, like, you, you just, you don't want to lose somebody like that. Because, again, you see the growth. You, you see these guys taking another step. You see these guys reaching another level. And we just, we don't want to lose that. Mike McDonald just, and you think about it, you think about all the possible turnover that the Baltimore Ravens could have uh, on both sides of the ball, obviously, but certainly on the defense. They got a lot of pending free agents. And with Mike McDonald as a defensive coordinator, uh, even though they were going to lose some people, they, were, they of course, would still gain some people, but Mike McDonald gives you that confidence. Like, hey, even though we may lose a Geno Stone, we may lose a Patrick Queen, we may lose... Amada BK, we, oh, I don't think we're going to lose him, but it's still possible. But my point is, even though we may lose a, a good amount of guys, there's Kyle Vannoy, there's Jadavian Clowney, there's plenty of guys that we could lose. Mike McDonald gives me confidence that even though we'll lose some of those guys, we may get some back too. He gives me plenty of confidence that Ravens defense, they'll be just fine under him. They, they will be A-OK -okay under Mike McDonald because he's continuing to learn he, and, and this dude 36 years old he's super young he is extremely young man and this guy gets it he gets it he he clicks with his players he he he, he knows how to change stuff up he's one of them people if it ain't broke don't fix it he gets it Again, how many defensive coordinators? And again, it's possible. It could have happened with other people. But how many defensive coordinators could have the number one defense? Um, what are they? Number one in takeaways, number one in sacks. And, and, and all t collectively, obviously. Um, but how many defensive coordinators could still have the number one defense? You were missing Marlon Humphrey. He missed the first four games. And he missed like a handful of games uh, throughout the season. You never had one of your starting outside linebackers in Tyus Bowser. You missed a Dafe away for like, what, five, six games this season. You had David Ajabo, your second round pick, who came in with you. You had, you had David Ajabo, but he ended up missing most of the season. Um, you, you've had Marcus, you're starting free safety. First game of the season. Torn Peck, oh, it's looking like he's going to be done, but he, of course, came back. Then he missed time, then came back. So he was shaky all year. But so you, you have all these games where you're missing different guys, and then some games toward the end of the season, Kyle Hamilton, he was a little hurt and whatnot, but thank goodness Ravens got that number one seed. He got the rest up. But so you get what I'm saying? So you, you've been missing so many key guys throughout the season. At different points, at one point or another, one game or another, some games or another, but you were still, despite that, you were still able to create and maintain the number one defense in the NFL. That's amazing. That's why a lot of us don't want Mike McDonald to go because Mike McDonald has shown the Baltimore Ravens and shown us as fans, has shown the NFL this such a high level of consistency. He showed us this consistency in the regular season, and then he went and said, oh, regular season was cool, huh? Watch this. Texans, 
Y'all are not gonna get paid. Yeah, CJ Stroud is on fire. This dude just threw three touchdowns last week. What? Te- you're not gonna get a single touchdown on us. Watch this. You're not gonna get a single touchdown on this defense. You're not. CJ, no, no, you're, you're not. You're, you're really not. Oh, I ain't got my number one corner. You're not throwing a single touchdown on us. Watch. You know, as a matter of fact, CJ Stroud in that Texans offense, you're not even gonna get past the 25 yard line in four quarters. Four quarters of action, you're not going to get past the 25-yard line. It's crazy, man. Then it, it goes up a notch, too, because, again, Patrick Mahomes, early on, hey, 14 points like that. It's like, oh, okay, he got 14 points on us. All right, watch this. I bet he won't score another one. I bet, I bet he won't get another one. Oh, okay, they got the field goal right before halftime. There was some little winky-wonky penalties in there. But anyway, all right, they got the field goal. 17 points. All right, cool. Watch this. I bet he won't score another point. I, I, I bet that Chiefs offense, they will not score another point the whole game. And he did that. He did that. So for him to obviously be game on in regular season, then in postseason to be able to step it up a whole nother notch, that says a lot. And another thing, too. Wow, the, the Baltimore Ravens, they were the number one defense, led in sacks and led in takeaways, too. Get, get, get this, get this, get this. How many takeaways did they have in the postseason? They didn't have any. They have none. C.J. Stroud and them, they did not fumble the ball. They didn't throw any picks. Patrick Mahomes and them, they didn't fumble the ball. They didn't throw any picks. So they didn't even have any takeaways in the playoff games. But even without any takeaways, that defense was still, this is how you know that defense was real. Because so many people could think, oh, oh, the defense, oh, they, they get a pick. That's why they said, oh, they forced a turnover. Oh, they forced, they, they got a takeaway. And those are great things to do because you want your defense to, to force takeaways for sure. But the way that you knew this defense was for real because they went against the best of the best in Patrick Mahomes. They went against up-and-coming C.J. Stroud. They did not have any takeaways, no interceptions, no nothing. But they still played lockdown. Well, for C.J. Stroud, the whole game, for Patrick Mahomes, that second half because of them adjustments. Hey, hey, he's the best in the game for a reason. But they went against the best, and they performed in an excellent way. This is why I do not want Mike McDonald going anywhere, but this is why I'm pretty sure Mike McDonald is gone.